Hello and welcome to this lesson from the GCSE PE portal. Today we're going to be looking at the mechanics of breathing. When we go from rest to exercise, we know that our breathing changes, but for your exam what you need to be able to talk about is what changes during your inhalation from rest to exercise and what changes during your exhalation or your out breaths from rest to exercise. So what we're going to go through is this table on the board and talking about how we actually get air into our body at rest and then out again and then when we do start to exercise what changes occur to get air in quicker and air out quicker. So to start with we're going to look at inspiration but before we even go into the mechanics about it and what actually changes we first need to know about pressure. How do we actually get air into our body? Because it doesn't just magically sort of just flow in. Uh, we don't like, have a straw just sort of suck air into the body. What we actually need to do is create a pressure difference because air is a gas and gases move from areas of different pressures or concentrations of gases. Because if, I use this example, imagine you were in a crowded room and there's loads of you crammed in shoulder to shoulder and through a door you can see a massive open space. Okay, another room, no one in there, but the door's currently shut. If the door's suddenly, you know, flown open, or thrown open even, what are you going to do? Chances are you're going to try and get into the, into the place where you've got space. You're all cramped up, you're somewhere with lots of pressure around you, lots of things pushing into you. You want to get somewhere that's open, you want to be in space. Same thing is for gas, same thing goes for gas. So, in order to get air into the body, we need to assume that it's high pressure around us and we need to create a lower pressure environment that the air wants to go into. The way that we can create a low pressure environment is to create or increase the volume, increase the space of something. Because if we had a box here with five air molecules in and a box here with five air molecules in, there's not going to be any movement. They're both as squashed and free as, as, as each other. But if we were to increase or expand this box on the right hand side outwards, so now we've got a larger box with the same five air molecules in, suddenly that's very inviting. There's more space between all of, the, all of the air molecules inviting new ones in. So by creating a larger space, the existing air in it is put into a state of lower pressure because there's less molecules in there. So that's how we get air in. We create a space of lower pressure and air from the environment around us is drawn in. The question is, how do we do that? That's where the mechanics of breathing comes in. So, at rest, all we need to do is create a slow, gradual, small pressure difference. The muscles that we can use to achieve this are our external, so I put EX, and then intercostals. External intercostal muscles. These are the muscles that line and lie over the top of our ribs or our rib cage. If you think of think of a rib cage in 3D, on the top or on the outside surface, you've got external intercostal muscles, and then on the internal surface, so the ones between the ribs and the lungs, you've got internal intercostals. External between ribs and skin and then internal intercostals between ribs and lungs. If we contract the external intercostal muscles, they're gonna pull that rib cage up and out. Up and out, that rib cage is gonna move, it's gonna expand. And by expanding the space, that's going to cause the pressure to drop. Pressure, drop which is going to invite the air in. So resting inhalation. We've got the external intercostals lifting the rib cage upwards and outwards, leading to a pressure drop. We've also got the diaphragm, which is at the, it's the base of our ribs. And if that flattens, because that's normally a dome shape, if that flattens downwards into a flat shape, we've just increased, so we've just made loads more space. So we've got the external intercostals lifting the ribs up and out. We've got the diaphragm dropping and flattening. We've increased the size, we've inc increased the size of the thoracic cavity. We've reduced the air pressure, air moves in. 
and that's it, we just breathe. Now we need to breathe out. Now rest, we don't need to be forcing this air out. We're not in high demand of fresh air to get new oxygen in and old CO2 out. We're not in high demand. So we don't actually need to waste any energy contracting the muscle because we've got gravity on our side. That's so gravity here. Gravity works with us and it lowers this rib cage from its lifted position and expanded position. The rib cage is just dropped. Rib cage drops, and the diaphragm, which was brilliant because it flattened for us, it now just returns to its relaxed state. So if I just put the diaphragm or dia, relaxes. The rib cage drops, pressing on the lungs, decreasing the space, forcing air out. The diaphragm relaxes, it goes from that flat position back to its domed position, reducing the space, increasing the pressure, air moves from area of high pressure to low pressure. And that's how we breathe at rest. Now it comes to exercise. Muscles are working, oxygen demands are going up, energy demands are going up. We, stun, we suddenly need increased blood flow, packed full of oxygen, so that we can get that round to the bodies and we need to get CO2 out. So we need to increase the amount of air that we take in and out of our body every single minute, which is called minute ventilation, which I'll put down here. Or it's also written as VE. Let's put it here, minute ventilation. We need to try and increase minute ventilation so we get more O2 in and more CO2 out. The way that we do that is by changing the mechanics of our breathing so that we can achieve bigger breaths and faster breaths. So we'll start off with inhalation during exercise. We've still got the external intercostals contracted, we've still got the diaphragm flattening, and we've still got this up and outward movement and the pressure drop. That's, that all stays the same. What we've now got though, is a pretty big word here, sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. Okay, these are your muscles, and you'll be able to do this. If you sort of poke, put your thumbs or fingers into the side of your neck there, and take a deep, sharp breath, you can feel some muscles push out. That's them, your sternocleidomastoids, okay? They're based, sort of, they sort of originate up towards sort of the base of your skull, down towards sort of above you, or onto your clavicle and your top and your upper ribs. So when they contract and shorten, they help lift that rib cage up. We've now got more muscles contracting, which means we're producing more forceful contraction of those rib cage, or that rib cage is going to get pulled quicker and to a bigger degree. It's going to go even higher than if we just rely on our external intercostal muscles. Okay? So we've got the sternocleidomastoids, we've also got the pectoral minors. So if we just put the pectorals in here, pectorals. We've got our chest muscles, our pectorals, okay? The ones which sort of originate towards the top of our clavicle, onto our humerus, and then sort of into our rib, or onto our ribs, I should say. As they contract and shorten, again, that's gonna open up our rib cage, gonna lift them up and out. So we've now got two new groups of muscles which are joining the contractile force of external intercostals and the diaphragm to increase that thoracic cavity faster and to a bigger space, which is going to cause an even faster movement of air. We've now just breathed in far more in one breath. Now we need to get it out. We've got loads, we've got loads of air stuffed into us. If we just rely on gravity now, it's going to take ages before we can have another big breath again. So we need to be able to force that air that's stuffed inside of us, we need to force it out. And the way that we do this is by using our abdominals. So our brain starts using our abdominals because that draws our ribcage down and in faster to reduce that space faster so that we can then exhale that air sooner, faster, in larger volumes. It's all about speed and quantity. We've got our abdominals, and we've also now got, remember what I said earlier, the intercostals, but the internal intercostals, like the in intercostals. We've got the internal intercostal muscles, the ones that layer 
they, they layer the ribs between the inside of the ribs and the lungs. They're on the inside, and when they contract, they pull those ribs back in. So the abdominals, putting them down and in. The internal intercostals, putting them down and in. That space of that thoracic cavity shrinks rapidly. Pressure goes up, creating a high-pressure environment. Air doesn't like it. It gets forced out of our air pathway, out to the trachea, out to the nose and mouth, and we've just exhaled. And we've just blown out loads of air quicker than what we would have done if we relied on gravity. So not only have we brought in more, more air per breath because of an increased inspiration, but we've now sped up the time in which that we can switch between the two, or the frequency of our breaths. Because before it was in, wait for the gravity. In, wait for the gravity. Now it's in, out, in, out. The frequency's gone up. Our breathing rate has gone up. So we're now breathing more every breath and breathing more times every single minute, which is our minute ventilation calculation. How much we breathe per breath multiplied by how many times we breathe per minute. If we work out the volume of that, that's what that is. Okay, minute ventilation equals tidal volume times breathing rate. Tidal volume is how much air we breathe in or out per breath. Breathing rate, how many times we breathe per minute. Combine the two, minute ventilation. And that is the mechanics of breathing and how we respond to exercise. I hope that was useful and I hope to see you again soon.